Good evening, Warrior fans. Welcome to the fourth game of the season here in Richard E. Johnson Gymnasium on K. Saunders Court on the campus of Westdell High School. You're watching the Westdell Warriors hosting MEC opponent, Eastern Hancock. I'm the superintendent, Kyle Mealy, alongside me, the coach, John McLaughlin, as always. Always, we're bringing you this one tonight, courtesy of our sponsors, Star Financial Bank, Van Mater Reed Realty Team, and the Dowling Dumpster Rentals. And it is the Van Mater Reed Realty Team pregame, and I'm here with the man, Coach Mack. we got a lot to talk about tonight with Eastern Hancock coming into this one. Coming off of a really tough battle uh, with Union City earlier on Tuesday, and uh, the Warriors shot it really poorly. Coach, What's, what's this like when it comes to a bounce-back game for the Warriors? Well, it's one of those things is you can't wait to get into the gym right away and play that and get that taste out of your mouth. So uh, I talked to the coach, and you heard that on the pregame, that coach uh, said they had a good, really good practice, and uh, he said that, uh, you know, things went well, especially the day after he had their focus, which I imagine he probably would. And uh, so – Every, I think that they're just ready to play. Uh, both teams are coming off tough losses. Last night, Eastern Hancock had to uh, play a really talented new pal team. And so uh, I think both teams are probably ready to strap those shoelaces back on and, and get back after it tonight. You know, anytime it's a conference game, we've talked about this before, but anytime you play conference, it's a little bit different. You want to get you know off to a great start early in the year, and conference games mean just a little bit more. And looking at Eastern Hancock coming into this one, you've got to look at uh, number five, Caden Powers, who's coming into this one averaging 20 points per game. He's got a 67% field goal percentage and a 71% three-point percentage. Now, those stats come early off of game one. We could not find stats from last night up in uh, uploaded into Max Preps just yet. But uh, those are early on, and that's good shooting numbers from a guard, and that's kind of what you want out of a guard play. Absolutely, and if you're going to shoot 71%, you, you have the green light to shoot several of them probably. It sounds to me like he's taking high-quality shots too if he's able to knock those down. You know, Eastern Hancock over the last few years has had really good three-point shooting. Um, you know, they now they are in a different situation. They have a brand-new coach, and they have a, basically a whole new starting five from last year's team that was really good and ranked all year. So uh, these are young guys that are still learning the game too. Uh, and also learning a new system, although, you know, their head coach is longtime assistant and probably running a lot of the same things. Still a different voice on the sideline, and so you'll see how that all plays out tonight. Inside for Eastern Hancock, you've got the senior, Caden Willis, 6'3". He had 12 points in their first game, and he likes to, uh, he likes to play physical. He likes to uh, bang around inside there, and that's a concern. Uh, for Coach Burkett, one thing to watch for us is uh, due to that size, that's, that's one thing the Warriors don't have. They only have uh, Jack Rooker really coming in somewhere around that length at 6'4", 6'5". Uh, but from there, we're usually running about six foot from there. So that size has got to bother you inside. It's got to be something you got to worry about. Yeah, it does. So what do you do in those situations? What you do is you pressure the passer. Don't allow clean looks, easy passes. Don't keep working for a position and then make it – hard for those passes and those guards to make that entry pass in there to the big guys. So, uh, you know, the guards are going to have that much more pressure on them. Obviously, good three-point shooting team. If you can get scoring inside and kick it back outside for guys that are knocking down threes, that, that also makes it tough. So, we'll have our hands full, but uh, I think Coach said that they had a good week of preparation here after the Union City game, and I think he's, re he's got the guys ready to go. Well, Coach did have the opportunity to sit down with Coach Burkett once again, and we're going to bring you that pregame here, courtesy of Star Financial Bank. Here is the sit-down with Coach McLaughlin and Coach Burkett. We'll be back with you after this pregame on the West Hill Sports Network. Hello, and welcome to the pregame show. I'm here with Coach Burkett. Coach, how are we doing? I'm doing all right. All right, good, good. Uh, tonight's uh, opponent... Eastern Hancock comes to town in an MEC matchup, which we'll get to in just a few minutes. But let's recap just a little bit. As much as it pains us to go back and look at a yeah. loss like Union City, let's take away a few of the things that maybe we might have learned this week in practice. And, you know, I've always said, and you and I talked a lot about this this week, you can learn a lot about your team and losses too. So let's uh, talk a little bit. Let's recap. Let's go back. Uh, we got off to a decent start in that game and then, uh, Union City kind of controlled the game, really, the rest of the way, uh, due to partly uh, giving them some credit. 
and also it's partly on our issues yeah. that we were we worked through so i'll let you talk a little bit about that yeah so honestly um from my perspective i didn't i thought i was hoping the first quarter was our worst quarter okay. and uh unfortunately it was the best quarter we had in the game so um finished first quarter 11 11 as you saw and then it, we just couldn't get any shots to fall and then that ended up weighing on us and affecting our defense and our transition and you know we probably played pretty hard still but it wasn't quite to the level we have been when obviously it's easier to shoot when you have a lead it's easier to score when you have a lead it's easier to play with confidence when you have a lead so right. uh, we didn't play with a lead that was the first time and we didn't handle it very well so right. uh, fortunately for us though on uh, Wednesday practice was fantastic um, that's great we do a shooting drill and uh, we the goal is always score 100 but the most I've ever had a team score is 116 we scored 119 just shooting lights out so that's nice after coming off of a 28 percent right. from the field game and and i think that we're in the up and up right now and uh, hopefully that is impactful for our game tonight yeah and you know not to dwell on it a whole lot one of the things as coaches we talk about okay we've got the effort part taken care of we're playing hard now we've got to add the execution and playing smart and i think that uh some of the things that you know we've talked about off the air here is just you know Playing hard is, is a skill in itself. You've done a great job of getting there, and now we've just got to work on some of that execution, which is going to come. First time we really saw a lot of zone in a game. And I think that, uh, you know, like you said, getting in, getting a good week of practice is going to prepare you again. To, and and your season will not be defined by one game. No, I, I think it was actually – I mean, our coaches talked after the game, and this that could have been a, a turning point for us, even though it's early in the season, sure. of – we were we were feeling pretty confident after the first two games, and we felt like, you know, last year we beat Union City by a lot, so right. we should beat Union City again by a lot this right. year, and that just didn't happen. Union City came, they brought the energy, they had a great student section, they they did, they did a great job. I mean, credit to them for that. They jumped on us, and we did not respond well. So, um, I think it was a wake up call for us that hey, you know, we got to work hard every day in practice. Your right. preparation is what builds that confidence in games, and so. Uh, I think we had a good week, and hopefully that shows tonight. I have no doubt that you had a great week, and uh, um, you know the focus I'm sure was there all week, which is a good thing. So on to tonight's game, uh, MEC matchup, like we talked about. Uh, Eastern Hancock comes to our place, comes to town, and um, so now we have chance to see uh, you know a new Eastern Hancock team with a new coach. Yeah. What do we know about Eastern Hancock? You know, Coach Bechtel, he's been there for. As long as Spalding, I think, has yeah. been there. So um, I don't think they're going to run a lot of different things, but every coach, as you know, I mean, they they want to put their own tweaks on what sure. they run. But this is basically his JV group from last year, and they, I think, won 18 games as a JV team, and they're solid. I mean, right. they are, they're going to be a good team. In their first game, they shot 46% from three-point range. They shot 33 free throws, which means they're being very aggressive. Um, so it's going to be a really good team. And, they ran a whole second half. They ran a 2-3 zone. So we're going to have a test of how are we going to respond to how poor we played against Union City's 2-3. Right. Are we going to attack that well uh, tonight? So it's going to be a big test for us. They're a good team. Obviously, first MEC matchup. Eastern Hancock's always at the top of the MEC and the top portion of the right. MEC. So it's it's going to be a good test for us. And, uh, you know, no better way to start that MEC but to be right here at home, too. I think that really plays into our advantage. We used This used to be a week where we had packed in three games. We've taken away that Friday night game, which gives you a little bit more of a chance, which you and I both agree, the conference games are the games that you want to play well and win. Yeah, absolutely. Those are the ones you want to put the most focus in on and you, you want to dial in and practice of what, what we're preparing for. Um, and then the other ones, obviously, you want to prepare for everybody, but those are the ones you put the most focus into. And, and they're a good enough team that you, you've got to really be focused and right. dialed in and playing hard and executing well to, to win. Well, good luck tonight. We're looking for good things. And uh, like we said, this is a, a, a stretch here where we're going to start seeing some conference games in a row. Let's start it off with a nice win tonight against Eastern Hancock. Yeah, absolutely. And there you have it, another nice sit down by Coach McLaughlin with Coach Burkett brought to you by Star Financial Bank and Star Financial Bank, a sponsor of the West Hill Sports Network since its inception. And uh, now we're going to switch gears and we're going to get into Coach Mack's three keys of the game. And that's brought to you tonight by our other West Hill Sports Network, Dowling Dumpster Rentals. Mike Dowling and the Dowling Dumpster Rentals. You need something moved, something, you know, taken care of, something call Mike. Dumped. Something dumped. 
So as we transition into uh, the dump, let's dump in your three keys to the game. Well, first of all, I think we have to uh, play with some more confidence. We didn't play with a lot of confidence early in that game, and when things went bad, we didn't we weren't able to get ourselves right back into it. Then I'd say we have to play without fouling. We don't want to give up easy points, especially with the new free throw rule. We want to make sure that we don't do that. And then, of course, limit our turnovers. We're averaging 18 turnovers a game. You ideally want to be around 12 at a high school uh, level, and so we want to be around 12, and that's just too many. So we're going to have to limit our turnovers a little bit more. And here we go. We have the national anthem right on cue, brought to you by the Westdale Band. Currently going to do a moment of silence here for Lindsey Locker, who was uh, tragically passed in a car accident a week ago at Eastern Hanover. And as you heard there, it was a moment of silence for Eastern Hancock senior cheerleader Lindsay Locker, who tragically passed away last week in a car accident. And uh, I'm sure it's been a very difficult time for not only Eastern Hancock cheerleading, but the entire community of Eastern Hancock. Uh, just a, a life taken too soon. And uh, really appreciate uh, the administration here at Westdale taking the time to honor uh, Lindsay and our thoughts and prayers go out to her family and all of Eastern Hancock as we get ready for this one. But got a game ready to play here. We're going to be tipping off in just a moment. Here are the starting lineups brought to you by the man of the hour, the voice of the Warriors, Biff Wilson. Looks like it's going to be number 13 and number 32 so far, Coach. That's yes, number 13, Caden Willis. Number 32, Luke Morris. Number 33, Luke Schilling, number 35, Charlie Halcom, and number 43 is Caden Rubel, the big kid inside. So yep. you look at uh, Eastern Hancock's roster, they only have two seniors, both of them starting, but they only have two seniors. This is a young team that's going to be playing with this group for a couple years now. And here you go, folks. Now let's listen in to Biff Wilson as he brings us the starting lineup. For your Warriors.
And there you have it, starting lineup for the Warriors. Jacob Grant, Grayson Mealy, Gabe Becerra, Corbin Price, and Josiah Love. Josiah Love coming in, 18 points a game, leading the Warriors, and Corbin Price following that up with 11 a game. You want both of those uh, tonight. You want yeah. at least 18 from Josiah and 11 from Corbin. A little bit more if you could. Yeah, you'd love to see that out of both those guys, and then you're going to need another guy contributing in there somewhere, and it tips off and off the Eastern Hancock. Estelle's in man-to-man. -man. Nothing surprising there. Warriors typically play man. And they'll switch a lot of things. This Going is going to be Rubel right trying away. to go inside. And a steal by Price. Yeah, Looks like we got a foul, foul right away. Oh, i got to get on my stats. Well, you need to keep up because you know I'm not good at it. So <laughs> Here, you want this? I know I've got it. But okay. it usually they had it yeah. on. No, they don't. Okay. No, they don't. So that was Willis, his first. Well, Westdale comes down. Eastern Hancock in a man-to-man -man also. See if they what they do offensively or defensively here. They're staying. They're not switching anything. Grace Mealy with a three, and that's and good. They got it. <laughs> and they weren't. They didn't want to guard him, and he's done that one other time this year, and he I, got that one. I jokingly told him to not shoot anymore because he's one for one, but now he's two for two, so maybe he just doesn't miss. There's a nice drive and up, and that misses. And that's uh, going to be on He is bleeding pretty good underneath the basket. So uh, that's a big foul. Oh, I guess it's a contact. Sorry, I thought I saw something dripping out, but well, maybe he is. But I'm just sure if he's checking him out. I don't know if it's a contact or. Looks like looked, a contact. Okay, good. Because it looked like he was holding his yeah. hand under there for blood. And I hate to see that this early in the game. but uh, uh, I believe they would let him. Can't I mean, they just let him put that in and then come he, back to he's the foul got, line? He's got time to do that. He says his stuff's in. He's done coach my stuff's in the locker room. Coach, I don't think it's going to do any good in there. Yeah. See what he can do. Use your, other, use your other eye. He's probably going to need that. Yeah. And he misses the first one there. So Grayson Mealy gets him started with the three-pointer, and, and I don't blame Eastern Hancock. He you know, let him prove it, and uh, he hit that one. So, And there's the uh, second free throw goes for uh, Willis. And we've yet to see him play, but he looks like a tough matchup, 13 there for Eastern Hancock. He's very athletic and long. Gabe Becerra with a nice swing pass. Now here's Love. Get in there. there. Get one going. There, there we go. go. Good. Josiah Love, and it took him a lot last week, or excuse me, last game to get things going, but that's a good sign, Coach. Yeah, two for two so far from the field. Good quality shots. Both of them aggressive shots. A little curl action here. Kick back out. Inside out game. And the Warriors doing a good job of help defense right now. They get to the rim that time. That's a nice drive. That's Luke Moore. Uh, yeah, Luke Morris there for two. And uh, uh, take and almost got the second foul on 13, but letting them play a little bit. And that's uh, all right with both coaches, I'm guessing. <clears throat> Kick to the outside on the drive. It's a three on the way, and... That's off. That's off. We got to go get it. Got to go get it. We come up with it. Now we got numbers. We can get a handle on the ball here. Ooh, that's a nice bounce pass inside. That's a and one. <laughs> Corbin Price with an excellent pass inside, and he gets Josiah a second with another one to go. But heck of a good look there. Absolutely, Coach Bechtel wanted an offensive foul right here and probably could have gotten that. They just didn't happen to call it. Maybe felt like he flopped a little bit or I don't know what it was but they didn't they didn't get it and so it paid off for the Warriors and they're calling a no shot saying he was on the line you got a lane yeah line violation I believe they called it on Josiah yeah they did so that one is no good but it's good to see Josiah on the board with his first two shots that foul was on 33 Schilling that's only his first so only Three fouls called so far. Coach, I think they're letting them play a little bit. They are. Again, I think both coaches are okay with that as long as it's called that way. Oh, that's a tough one. Yeah, I think he reached out and didn't. One of those is where he just didn't know where you were on the floor and looking at the ball and lost track of where you were. Otherwise, I think he would have let that one go out. Oh, that's a big shove off by Willis. And they were like, they'd love to get that call because that'd be two on. Number 13, Willis, has already picked up a quick one. We'd love to get another one on him. Yeah. He's long and athletic. And, and it was worse than it looked just because he extended the arms. I don't think it was any yeah. ill will there. Just trying to get some separation. It's a back screen to a ball screen. Good action. Over to Corbin. 
There's Josiah again, and he got – oh, that one's off. Good so offensive rebound. Jacob Grant over to Grayson. Gabe gets inside now. He gets head almost knocked away. I like the way we're playing aggressive right yeah, now. Yeah, a little turnover there. I do. I agree. Something we didn't see Tuesday is right. – we got to stay out of foul trouble. That's another one for us. That's a, again, they're going to let him go. You better take it up strong. That's a rip, and that's going to be here. Okay, that's well, going to stay here. I thought he touched it last. I May was have. with you, Coach, but May I'm have. not going to go against Sean Scherf. <laughs> this is my favorite, one of my favorite crews. Good guys right here. Yeah, these are good guys. Paul Gonzalez, Sean Scherf. You remind me of the other guy. You remember the other guy's name? I can't think of the name off the top of my head. Oh, he's he's nice going to be mad, too, because yeah. I – I just talked to him for well, 10 minutes. Yeah, you should know this thing. I know. You got to travel. Travel. 7 3, 4 52 to go. We got two substitutions. It's going to be Jack Rooker and Trey Adams. It's going to be Price and Becerra that go out. So it's going to be Rooker, Love, Mealy, Adams, and Grant in the game. Warriors already doing a little bit better offensively than they did Tuesday night against Union City. Ball screen action again. Grayson will stay down to a drive. Get, I'll tell you what's going to be open as soon as we figure it out is a back cut. Yeah. There's Jack. Gonna take that up Got to be a little stronger with that one. That one off. Don't want to get a foul that far from the basket, but we also don't want to leave a shooter open. Man, that's off. Way off. Here come the Warriors with it. Get in there. And that's a good sign. Josiah Love with his sixth point early. He has six of the nine. And that's what you like to see with 4.08 to go. Yeah, I like the way we're playing offensively, really aggressive. You surprised they're not playing zone, Coach? <laughs> a little bit, because I know they play some. <clears throat> and especially since <clears throat> Union City seemed to have pretty good success with it. <clears throat> oh, that one right there, back Joe. into Joe, and it just bounces out again. And I think we got a jump. They're Jump ball, maybe. Foul. They're going to call a foul, foul on Jack Rooker. Good hustle, though, and we had a couple chances right there, right around the basket. That's going to be Jack's first. But what I was saying was Union City did play that zone. We, yeah. we didn't attack it well, and I just – maybe I'm a little surprised Eastern Hancock didn't come out in that. Me too, and I think that we'll see it at some point. Maybe they're going to see what they can, how they can do man. Right now they're struggling because we've got a quick nine points on the board. Eastern Hancock now against that warrior man-to-man. -man. They're switching everything, but it looks like Cade, Cade Rubel, number 43. That That is not a switch off right now, I think, because of the size. Inside. Good rip. It's going to be some kind of three seconds. And the bar Trey's got it now. Pick ball, it up. Our ball pressure is really bothering their guards. Got nice, Trey. Trey. Get in there. Jump stop and finish that. Yeah, that was a tough shot to be on the other side of the basket, but I agree. Ball pressure is good. Can't lose shooters. And there's Willis with a good look. And oh, it goes. Boy, it hits. Yeah. Those are ones as coaches you're like, oh, my gosh, that was way off. It, it was hit. way off, but somehow the old touch, yeah. touch fairy came around and knocked that one in. Stuck right in the back of the rim and rolled in. He'll take it, though. 9-6 nine, nine, nine now. Grant, that'd be a good if it – oh, I was going to say, it would be good to get Jacob Grant going. He had a good first game of the year, and he's been quiet since. That's Willis again now. Almost looked like he pulled the foot. Nice screen there almost. <clears throat> Grayson got away with the push this old guy right into him. Yeah. That's a great way to – they can't see it all. I mean, he just yeah. kind of – I wouldn't say push, nudged him that way. 43 was looking at him like, hey, hey. Grayson's getting a lot of that off the roll, and he's not really like, that's not what he wants. It's not his role. Trey, Trey is good at reading that back cut. He just hasn't figured out that it's going to be there because it is going to be there. Get up there. Get up there. Oh. Block from behind. That was clean. Let's see if we can <coughs> take a charge right here. See if we can get a charge. Yeah, they are letting us play. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I like yeah, it. I got a timeout. Got a timeout over here. West Hills. Got a timeout with possession. Yeah, I think Paul's going to go tell him. Well, they're going to talk about it first. I think they've awarded it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a timeout. That's going to be a timeout to West. Let's see if it's a 30-second timeout. Yep. 30-second timeout. We'll stay here. So far, pace of play is, is, I think, 
really in no one certain favor. I think both teams want to play this way. I do like that they're letting them go up and down a little bit. We'll have to monitor it. You don't want it to get too crazy if it gets a little chippy here and there. But right now, I like the way both teams are playing. I think we're deeper than they are, and we haven't been able to say that for a few years, but I think we're the deeper team. And I also think that if you look at them, they would love to pound it in, us collapse, and then kick it back out. And we haven't had to do that much yet. And when we did, we did quick and recovered. So we've caught them off balance a little bit here. Uh, we just got to keep them from – they want to get the ball and get to the rim. And then if they're not open, they're going to kick it out uh, if, the, if the post feeds aren't open. So we've done a nice job defending all that so far. It's 9-6 there on your Star Financial scoreboard as you see that at the bottom of your screen. And also scrolling in the right-hand corner, all of the corporate sponsors for the West L Athletic Department. Warriors now have it, leading by three. Looking for the lob. Nice job of playing that. Like to get Corbin Price going, too. I think that'd be big for the Warriors. Jack's got to make a move here. So far. Good defense so far by good, Eastern Hancock. Yeah, and, and we're being patient. That's okay. I mean, it, they're a good team. They're going to play good defense. So be patient. You know, something will break down. over. Uh, eventually, someone will get out of position. Break. We'll push off. Crowd didn't like that. There's the nice cut. cut what did I tell you? Sarah and well, boom. What did I tell you? You called it. Back cuts are open as soon as that first guy figured it out. And Gabe was the first one to figure it out. They're and good. a great look by Jack Rooker. And Jack's doing some uh, work down there because Ruble's not making it easy for him. No. And that'll be something to watch is how Ruble, Rooker, and then also Grayson Mealy has to come in and work on that a little bit. But a lot of good uh, effort. I give him some credit right there. He I stayed like, with it. I like the way Ruble plays. He is a hard worker down yeah, there. Yeah, he's only a junior, so we're going to see two years of him. He's Big, strong kid. You could tell. I remember him from last year. You know, that's J these guys. Most of these guys play JV because they were so talented last year that they had to, a lot of these guys play JV, and I think they won like 18 games on the JV level. So these guys just haven't played varsity basketball in a year. You'll see a kid like that, big, strong kid, finish probably. And now in for Willis will be number 23, and that is Garrett Shaw entering. He's a junior replacing the senior Willis. So, so far I have two fouls on them. Ruble's going to miss them both. Miss them both. R Rooker gets it. Two fouls on Hancock and three on Westell. So, I, I'll keep this pace kind of going. Yes. I like, so far I like our ball security much better than Tuesday night. Yeah, we've, been, we've done a nice job. We're not forcing anything. We shot way too quick last game. That's a good. That's a great shot by Josiah Love. And so Love has nine, and it took him that long. He didn't get that till the third quarter of Tuesday yeah, night, he's, so he's already going a little better. Nice pass. He's too good of a player to not hit baskets. Oh. Ruble. Jack got to stay down on those. Yeah, what a great pass by number 32. That was Luke Morris. Just a great look. Drive baseline back out to Trey. Quick three. Short. Just short, and it's a buzzer. No bucket. And a good first quarter by both teams, but the Warriors lead by six, 14 to eight. We'll be back here for second quarter action on the West Hill Sports Network. And welcome back here to K. Saunders Court. We're already in December, Coach. It's hard to believe, and you've talked about this before in the past. Uh, this years ago, just last year, this weekend would have been the fifth game. And yeah. we've made some adjustments. Now it's just the fourth game, but we've still played more games <laughs> than most of the people, yeah, uh, we, if you look it up on John Harrell's side. We did ourselves a favor and finally got that Madison Grant game moved later in the year. Uh, but, yeah, some teams are playing their second game tonight. We're already in our fourth. Would have been our fifth, but we got the Madison Grant game 
move. And playing Maz and Grant back to back with Eastern Hancock just wasn't a great, oh, great you can, fit. You can see that just out of the effort now. Here come the Warriors with it to start the second quarter. Grayson Mealy's back in the game. He lets another three one go. For three? Oh. No, he's does a little heat check. Corbin Price with the rebound. He can't get it to go. Corbin's still, still fighting battling. in there. I like the way we're going after the offensive boards tonight, not settling for anything, especially if they're not going to call it super tight. See what they run, a little high ball screen action. Ball pressure again bothering them. Good job, Joe. Again, switching everything except for Ruble. Just because of the size, nice little shot in by number 25. That is Eli Manship, a sophomore. Now it was a nice, tough little shot. Yeah. Put his head down, and you can see they want to get to the basket. Everything's predicated on getting to the basket, then kicks if they don't have it. They want to drive it and get there. There's Joe Silo down inside, and they're going to get a foul, I think, on. Yeah. That's number five, I think. Yeah. And that's Caden Powers, a sophomore. Yeah, they got him, wrapped him up, got, got him in a bad spot down there after the slip, and so he had to do nothing, nothing he could do but foul. A lot of ball screens off the elbow with that offense that they're running when they go high. This looking for that second, second cutter, cut. I believe, and it's not there. Nice back cut by Josiah Love. Yeah, that's good. And he scores it, oh, but they're going to call the charge. Well, that'd be a foul on Joe, but I still, I listen, I'll take the aggressive shot here. You know what I'd be saying if I was on the sideline. Give me that circle because he's so deep on that. Joe could do nothing, but he's already attacking the basket. Yeah. That's Rick Frank, by the way. It just came to me, yeah. so. Rick's a good ref and a good guy, but that one, and that's not his. They always tell me that's not our fault, Coach. The circle is not in. We got to call it if he's set. There's a three on the way, and oh. it's off. I feel like Grayson might have had good, he did. good position there, and they just went right over the top of him. That was Ruble. Not much you can do. Grayson's nope. given up about five inches. Bet you he blocks him out into the uh, cheerleaders next time. A nice drive. And that's Jacob gonna be, Grant, they're going to get a block. That's he, a good call. He was because he was there, and he turned his body at the last second, but he was the set. And that's going to be the, take it. That's going to be the second one on Caden Powers. So. I think your brother Austin's coming in. Austin Powers? I, I, uh, got, I got it. I, I, I looked down. You got me on that one. I looked down to see if that truthfully was his name. No, it wasn't. And that's not his brother. No, it's not. <laughs> but it would be cool if it was. <laughs> it'd be, you can imagine what it'd be like. They're staying at home, but the big kid just stays around. And Grayson's going to have to either drive I don't that, know what that was. Jump That's stop not a good shot. He was jump stop and pivot that back out. Yeah, he needs like to get the, the drive, ball out of there. That's there again, there's their driving to the basket. And here's what – and I think this is a great timeout by Coach. He, what he doesn't like is – the, our energy isn't as good on the defensive end right now. We've yeah. lost a little bit of energy. It's easy to, that first quarter to come out with a ton of energy here at home after you haven't played well. Got to keep it up. And he's sometimes as a coach, we got to manifest that energy a little bit. Yeah, you've got to you've got to guard that. And you've got to take care of it. That's part of your job as a coach is to read that. He read it. It's fourteen to fourteen. So now's a good time to make sure it doesn't get out of control. And uh, Coach Burke, it's a lot like you. Uh, he doesn't want to waste him unless there's a good reason right. to. There was many games you'd go into the fourth quarter with all five, and uh, that worked in your favor. Um, I think he's going to make a couple adjustments, which you would do at this point with your lineup, just to say, hey, let's get a new look in there. Let's get some differences in there and uh, just get our mindset back to where we need it to be. Well, uh, here, here's what you're going to see. You're going to, I can look at him right now and tell I love to watch coaches coach, but he's writing up a set right now. So he wants to get a good shot. He, the last couple possessions, maybe he doesn't feel like we've gotten the ball or the shot we wanted. We're going to get it right here because we're going to know who the shooter is going to be. Coach is drawing up a play. It's going to be whatever he, shot he wants to get, either that or there will be a multiple options. It'll be either the shooter he wants, which is probably Josiah, or a slip or something for Corbin here. And that's always something to watch if you're just a casual basketball fan. Uh, to know a little bit, like Coach Mack just told you, is uh, good coaches are going to come out and they're going to run something special out of those timeouts. Utilize that timeout to get your team reset, and let's see what we do here. A little back screen curl action. Here comes a curl for I would look for Jack in the post. The entry pass was bounds, not there. On. Gabe claps his hands. He knew it was on him. You know, one thing that I see more of, and maybe I'm getting old. I know what you're going to say. But I see a lot more of non-bounce passes yeah. into the post. And, it, it, and as a guard, a former guard, a post player needs a bounce pass into there. You're, you're floating it down to the baseline, and he can't do much with it there. Yep. 
Nice ball movement for Eastern Hancock there. A lot of inside out. I like it. Corbin Price tracking that one down. This is uh, – you need Gabe Becerra to get one. Yeah, ah. Just in and out. Feet were set, though. Eastern Hancock makes me nervous because I know they can shoot. They were a good shooting program, and I'm, I'm worried when these start to fall. A little tip away there by Jacob. That's where we need to settle down, run something here. Looks like they're – that's a good no call. That's a good no call. Yeah, because if that's a call, it's probably on us. Yeah. Ooh, it's a, they're letting them play. They're yeah. going to play. You better be ready to play. And we have been so far, so we just got to take care of the ball. 14, 14, 4.45 to go. Oh, we got too deep. And right now, it's just one of these where but we're wearing them out. A we bit. look a little, <laughs> we don't look as sharp as we did in that first quarter now. We need to get that back. Not a lot of whistles. There's not a lot of dead yeah. time. And Josiah's off a little bit. Yeah, I, you can see that. You can see it in their legs and see it in there. I don't know what happened there. That he just, almost left. He didn't leave his foot, but he. it looked awkward. Coach was, Mechtel was not happy that he didn't look to shoot there. Good block out again, and they're going to get Caden Rubel over the back of Jack Rooker. Good effort by Jack. Yep. That's definitely on the scatter report. you got to block him out. Paul's trying to get everybody out of the way so he can call that foul in. I'm going to see two subs come in for Eastern Hancock. And yeah, you got Willis and Schilling coming back in. And for us, Trey Adams is going to come in for Corbin Price. As sharp as it was in the first quarter, it's starting to get a little. <laughs> both teams. Getting a little tired on both teams Both here. teams are now playing a little sloppier. But that's. You know, I'd like to see Rooker work a little. He's, he's there with his hands up in the post. But I'd like to see him sit down on the defense a little more. Because as a guard, I don't feel like he thinks he's open, but I don't feel like he's open. Yeah, and that pass is a tough one. Uh-oh, he may see a dunk here. And Willis goes and misses the dunk. Uh, coach is not happy. He's, no. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> Josiah Lowe, the right there with the a, counter. You want to talk about a four-point swing right there. That's so frustrating as a coach. You miss a dunk, and then it comes down, and the other guy hits one on the other end. Yeah, and I think it was for Willis, it was he had to slow down, and at that time we had a defender get back and kind of make it tough on him. He's not – you could tell ball handling is not his – No, he wasn't. Not that many. No. I mean, he can handle it, but not for that many dribbles. There's, coast to coast is what he was trying. And you want to talk about letting them play. Wow. We are playing through contact. And I, and Rubel <laughs> likes it. I think everybody likes it. Caden Rubel likes playing that way, and it's 16-16. You can't give him multiple chances. Did like we? That. Did Paul and Sean start doing Big Ten games? I don't know, but they're letting them. I went to Mount Vernon and Southport last night, and this is about as way the game was called last night. And we finally, that's Ruble's second. That could be trouble. Maybe Sean and Paul are, yeah, moving up. Maybe they're doing. This is I a, didn't check their patches. <laughs> I don't think they say Big Ten. <laughs> Who'd they call that? They called that on Willis? Oh, yeah, that was Willis instead of Ruble. Either way, that's a tough that's foul a for That's a tough them. one. That's his second. So that's a lot of length. They're going to have to give up unless the coach is going to let him play. I tell you what, you look at all these guys out here. They've got their hands on their hips. Some yeah. of them are leaned over. <laughs> it's early in they, the year. They are. Well, when you're playing this physical and you're allowed to play this physical with no whistles, you are uh, putting it all out there. Again, Easter Hancock had to go on the road last night to New Pal. Jack can't hit either one of those free throws. I'm, I'm sorry. I think they were at home. But still, nevertheless, a good New Pal team. Oh, yeah. New pal's always tough. Here's Rubel. Nice drop step. And a good defense, but and that's a good get, drop step. They're going to get Jack Rooker for that one. And that is going to be. I'm going to say this in Jack's defense. Play to the guy's strong hand, and that's not his strong hand. That kid just made a good move right there. Rubel looks good, and that's going to bring Mealy in for Rooker. That's so two. now, Grayson, we give up the height, and we do get a little bit of. So what you do with Jack is you give up about five inches. But what you get with Grayson is about another 30 pounds. Yeah, about 200 more pounds on the bench press. <laughs> yeah. So you lose the height, but you get the strength, so we'll see how that plays out. But Sarah, that's a lot of contact. But uh, Becerra's got to do more to collect yeah. to get that foul. Yeah, I agree. I think both of us are like would like that call, but they haven't called that tonight. No. Either way, because – Eastern Hancock's putting their head down like that. Oh, driving. Josiah Love got Willis from behind on the block. 
Nice, nice look inside by Grant. You got it. To Becerra. Tell you what, do what does still work in high school basketball? Shot fakes. That's right. Just worked right there. 18-18, just under two minutes to go in the half. This has been one heck of a game when it comes to physicality, and that's knocked away by Trey Adams. I think it should stay with Eastern Hancock. It does. Good. Paul asked for help, and he saw it because I think Rick was going to give it to us. I'd have taken it. I would have too. I think Paul had it right. He did. I wouldn't have told him that. But no. Going to go for the lob. Yeah. We don't, we don't have any height in there. Nope. And that three guards couldn't – there are two guards and one forward couldn't make him stop, and Caden Rubel is having a good game. Let's see what we get here. Okay, there's a 2-3 zone. Yeah, well, I wondered nope, what we nope. – Well, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, I think so. Becerra, nice attack, kicks out. One more. Good ball movement. Now, don't let it just corner. sit. Kick it. There you go. That's a great drive and stop. That's what Grayson needs to do. Ooh, that looked like a lot of contact from behind. Here's what I won't complain about, though. It, we're going we're gonna to not get some of those if they're going to let them play all the time. Well, and – Trey didn't react really like he felt like he got fouled. Yeah. So a lot of times I look at the player. Well, you can't always do that because players always think they got fouled. But yeah, and they always think they don't foul. Good, Joe with a good drive, good help there, recovery. That's going to be a little short. Is that, that Joe Sign with was, the shot? Yeah, it was Joe coming off that movement. I couldn't here. tell if it got partially blocked, but. That's a three. He shot those a lot more last year. And that's, and that's, that's good. A, that's his third. That's yeah. Willis's third foul. I'm telling you, you know my rule. I don't play them once they get more than two because I don't want a guy. I don't want that to happen with a minute to go. Yeah. I do not want my but one of my better players picking up his third foul. Also going to put uh, Mealy at the line now. So that, that I agree with you, coach. That's tough because uh, when you play them, usually you would. I'll give you credit on that. You'd sub them out. You'd look at me and say, hey, get them out of there before that would happen. Yep. And uh, just to protect them in that last minute, Remember minute once 30. in a while, put them back in on the offensive end, but late in the quarter. That was a good shooter's roll there. Yeah. Gets one. Let's see if he can get the next one. Here comes number 25 back into the ball game. That's going to be Eli Manship, the sophomore, replacing Willis. So Willis will have three, which is something to think about even coming out into the second half. The second one, not good, and Rubel lost it, That's and it's going to stay ours. here. It's uh, 19 to 20, the Royals lead here with 101 to go, and the Warriors get a break. Going to get it back. Back to zone here for Eastern Hancock. Staying man, but going up. Grayson's going to drive it. Jump stop uh, that. It's really not his game. He puts his head down. He has no idea where he is, but uh, especially going against Rubel, so. But I guess I like to drive. Maybe gotta, trying to draw the foul. Got to take it. Yeah. There's a long three. They have not gotten that shot to fall. Forty seconds. Oh, and they're right it. out of the hands of Jacob Grant. Number one, Grant was just turning to find the ball. That's not his fault. He was got a little bit of contact right across half court, and he was trying to get readjusted. And Gabe Becerra was halfway through the pass before he got yeah, and his really, eyes. And really, take, if you rewind that and watch that again, Gabe had no one on him. And he so didn't need it. to make that pass. Yeah. 30 seconds to go, Eastern Hancock with a one-point lead. Trying yeah. to extend it, probably hold for the last shot, I would yeah. think. Yeah, I would sure think so. It's been a hard-fought physical game. We've got a foul or two to give here. Not that we would, but if we do foul – not going to hurt us. Going to be a high ball screen here, I think, and then looking Trying for to turn Rubel the corner. off of it. He did turn the corner. Grayson Good has block it. Out, Trey Adams. It to Josiah. Josiah's got about three on the clock. Going the length, just misses it. And a good chance to take the lead, but a good first half. Oh, and there goes the exit sign. Well, if only we knew somebody. That, uh, yeah, there you go. What it, yeah, Mr. Whatever. Denny can fix it. It's, yeah. No, he can't. No, he can't. Well, a good first half here in Richard E. Johnson. The Warriors trail 20 to 19. We'll be back here shortly on the Westell Sports Network.
All right, we're back here. We're going to have a little bit of elementary basketball out here, but while we do that, um, we will talk a little bit about our unofficial stats. We don't have the ability tonight to have the unofficial stats for uh, Eastern Hancock because I wasn't able to keep them because they didn't have that handy-dandy yeah. stat sheet for the away team. So enjoy a little elementary basketball while uh, I try to run the camera at the same time and get that. But, Coach, unofficially I have uh, Gabe Becerra with four, and I have Josiah Love with 11, and Grayson Mealy with four, and that's our offense. Um, well, it makes sense. We've only scored 19 points, so they're not going to be a ton of scoring right now. But on the other side, Eastern Hancock, we've been able to hold them to 20. And if you told Coach at halftime he'd held Eastern Hancock to 20 points, I think he'd probably be all right. Yeah. And you can hold Eastern Hancock. They double that to 40, and we're in good shape. So, uh, you know, I, I'm sure both teams would feel like they probably wish they could have knocked down a few more jump shots and probably felt like they had some that didn't go their way. And um, But you can chalk some of that up to good defense by both teams. So we'll see how the second half plays out. But uh, right now I'd say – you know, it's it's right there for the Warriors. If they can uh, capture some of that early energy we had. I don't know, we had 14 points at the end of the first quarter. So, the Eastern Hancock's credit, they did a nice job of defending us in that second quarter. Coach, as we look out here and we see some future Warriors, just when you talk about your years coaching, uh, what, your, what is uh, the youth and the feeder program you know, what's that mean to a head coach? Well, it's so important. I mean, when I got here, there was really no feeder program. We started that grassroots league. We had junior pro. Coach Burkett's uh, continued that. He, he even did a little bit uh, new things with the uh, junior pro league that I thought were great. Got them even playing more now. So, um, and then we play on, as you know, on Sundays, we have people all I over the place think, here. I just wanted to ask you about that. Sunday yeah. League, you started that years ago. Yep. Um, I don't think a lot of people, of course, a lot of people that drive by, <laughs> obviously on Sunday they see a full parking lot, and they don't even know how many people are parked in the back. But right. just kind of talk about that. Tell us the communities that come in and, yeah, we've and got, really what it's done for we've our got school. four sites now playing with – with multiple gyms going we have five courts going in here every day every sunday we have multiple courts going at alexandria frankton elwood mass and grant some weekends including ourselves and then schools from all over as far as as far as um we've got people from tri central in here we've got uh, hamilton heights we've got all the local schools from around here and uh you know one of the things i was wanting is a, a league that was geared more towards smaller schools and also a league that played man-to-man. -man. There's no sense in going and playing at this age and playing the 2-3 zone and not teaching kids how to play. So we uh, we started that league several years ago, continued to start with boys and girls, and we only had two play, two uh, facilities, us and Daleville at the time. Now it's so big we have four, and that's just on Sundays. The girls play now their own league on Saturdays, and our girls are involved in that also. So in your time coaching, and you've, you've spanned – three decades right. almost uh if you include playing you're almost i hate to say this you're in five decades of yeah, basketball yeah, yeah. Um, one thing if you're talking to a parent today what's one thing as you've noticed about sports and youth sports maybe not just basketball is there a message to tell parents you know just kind of like understand that we've gotten really into nice shot there and score we've gotten really into worrying about the future of these kids way too early yeah. and I think we lose sight of the fun that we're seeing out here right now and, yeah. and the moments because we're worried so much about you know private lessons getting right. them ready for the next thing the next thing but do you ever sense that maybe your message might be hey stop and enjoy the moment a little bit of that and one of the things I'll say is you know it worked pretty well in the old days was just go get a basket and put it up in your driveway get your son out there shooting or daughter out there shooting the hand ball handling and dribbling and playing against the neighbor kids At this age I always, I know Coach Burkett and I feel the same about this. We want repeat customers. We want them to want to come back next week and play. And uh, so it needs to be fun because it's a game, and we need to uh, make sure they're having fun. I mean, there's a time and a place for personal trainers. There's a time and a place for all that stuff, and I don't know it needs to be in fourth and fifth grade. I'm not saying it's a terrible thing, and there's some really good guys out there doing those kind of things. But what you need is you just need to be playing and enjoying. The other thing I would say is get your kids in as many sports as you can. I was just going to ask get you Get them playing multiple sports, playing, staying competitive, 
playing for the band sounds great by the way yes. uh, playing in multiple sports playing and uh, staying competitive is a big part of learning how to play manage sports you know if you go look at most of division one athletes and most of the pro athletes they'll tell you that they played multiple sports and a lot of them are good enough to even high school they were getting looked at at multiple sports so you don't need to spend a bunch of money. You just need to put the work in. Well, you look at guys like Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge was a uh, all-state in three sports. Yeah. He was a basketball, a right. uh, football, and a baseball. And you see he's a big name with the Yankees now. But even going further back than that, I always love this one. But one of my favorite players, just because he was kind of flashier, kind of like the the modern Pete Maravich, was Jason Williams. Yep. Jay Will, they called him White Chocolate, of course. Yeah. But Jay Will played in high school, and not a lot of people remember this. He played with a guy who was pretty well-known on the football side. He played with Randy, Randy Moss, Moss, and yep. Randy Moss was an All-State basketball player, yeah. and he talked about how great of a basketball player Randy Moss was. He was an athlete, so uh, a lot of people don't realize. That you think of that team. Think of Jason Williams yeah. and Randy Moss coming at you. Probably pretty good, but yeah. pretty good athletes and long and athletic. You know, I just think it's important for kids. Very, very rare they're going to have anybody go on. You know, I was lucky enough to have one kid go play the, in the NBA, and – he was – it wasn't a mistake. He was so much bigger, stronger, and better than all the other people. And he never played AAU basketball until until he was 17. I mean, he just played at the park and played at the you know, open gyms and played with the older guys and got better. So, you, you know, it's just a matter of getting out there and playing. And you know what? Let the kids have some fun. Let them – I really think that's very important. You can play all you want at an early age, but if they start hating it by the time they're right. 15 and 16, then they're not going to want to do it anyway. My hope is to never lose what you see out here, which is the most pure form yeah. of sports is high school sports. And, you know, only less than a percent of these kids are going to move on to college and play it. And even a smaller percentage of that percent has a chance to play it at any level professionally. So, really, this is the moment to enjoy. And as a parent, you were a parent. You watched it. Right. Um, you, you just have to savor all these moments and understand this is as pure as it gets and enjoy every moment with yeah. your kids. And, and like you said, get them out there and let them at Westdale. They can play anything they want. Absolutely. And that's a good thing. And right. let, them, let them try anything they want. They don't have to be exceptional at, at everything and just let them play. Well, you know, Want, want to play is a big part of it. Getting kids out there and being competitive is a big part of it. But like you said, you can play a lot of multiple and a lot of other sports. But you also think back as a, as a parent. A lot of us played athletics or were involved in athletics. Those are great memories. You oh. have great memories. I mean, they, I remember the bus rides more the than bus I do rides, a lot of the things. games, the the coaches, the practices. And those are sometimes some of your lifelong friends. And once, even if you don't, you're looking them up, trying to figure out where they are now and what they're doing so you can reconnect. So a lot of positives to playing sports. I think the positives way far outweigh the negatives. Oh, yeah. So don't bring the negatives into it. Leave those out and let's, let's just get the positives and focus on those. Well, there you have it. It was a good night for you sports. It was an elementary basketball night. And you able, if you watched all evening, you were able to see that on your video at, between games at halftime of both games. And now we have the second half where the Royals leading 20-19. to 19, And it was a hard-fought battle. We'll probably see some of the same in the second half. Unofficially for Eastern Hancock, I have Ruble had eight. And I think Willis is sitting around four, and that's all unofficial. Uh, oh, that's about 12 of their 20. I couldn't tell you where the rest of them are. Uh, because, again, I was kind of just doing it. A little bit in my head and a little no, bit on paper. I wasn't helping much. I can be real honest with that. And here we go. We're into the third quarter of action. Looks like we're we in a 1-2-2 here. Yeah, we're here. coming out in a 1-2-2. Look a little trap action. We've seen that before. Yes, we have. And a little inside and a bucket, easy bucket. And Willis scores pretty easy off of that, so we'll see how long we stay in that 1-2-2. And let me see. Are we going to go man for Eastern Hancock? Yeah, still I think man. So. Of course, they're leading, so I guess I wouldn't change much. See if it's called the same way. It's one of the things that you want as a coach. You want it called both ways, both halves. That's a good kick over to Becerra. He's got to get one to go, and there he does. It is. Assist the love. Becerra knocks it down. That's a big three for Gabe Becerra. Right back to man to man for Westell. So just an early possession, maybe to throw him off. Spent the whole halftime talking about what they wanted to do, and then you make them do something they don't want to. Good defense. Yeah. Really? Okay. I'm Can't telling give you, up baseline, though. Ruble's having a good game tonight, a really good game. Good initial defense, but don't give up baseline. Make him turn back to the middle. You don't have any help down there. 
Warriors looking to set something up here. Looks like Grant's redirecting action. Versal, good ball screen, slip. Grayson Mealy gets it. Took it right at Rubel, and that's going to be Rubel's second, and Grayson gets the score with it. It's one of the things we talked about earlier in the first half. Is you said that he didn't, that the drive wasn't great. But well, I think, I'm biased because I'm I his dad. Are. I know you are. That's why I'm going to stick up for him. The, the drive is good if he'll take it strong and jump stop. What he can't do is avoid contact. So see if he can finish this three-point play off, and he does. Yeah. Grayson Mealy gives the Warriors a 25-24 lead. And uh, now we're picking him up a little more pressure full court here. Staying in the man. Token pressure. You know, flatten us out. Looking Big to turn the corner. Here's the high weave. There it is. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot. How many steps do you get? I feel like they're. There's a good defense by Joe. Oh, he went and touched the net. Yeah, he can touch the net as long as he doesn't pull on All it. All right, there you go. That's touch the rim, actually, as long as he doesn't affect the. That was Willis. Ball. Nice little move. Jacob good. Here's Grant trying to get deep. Grayson trying to get it over to Corbin Price. Corbin inside, high nice, bank shot. Nice take. You'd like to see a shot fake right there, maybe get the defender off because he'll jump and leave his feet. Rubel with a nice rebound there. This kid really wants to get one to go. <laughs> you can tell he's yeah. used to hitting threes. A nice little spin move. Gets his own rebound. That can't happen. No, and he's back up and in. And they extend it to 28-25. 5.40 to go here in the third quarter. They're, they're putting up. a little bit more length on Josiah with Willis. But now Josiah got away from him. And there's Price with the rebound. And Price. Oh. Muscles that one right through contact. Powered it right through, Coach. Did I like it. Don't avoid contact, especially with shot blockers. Go right at him. Oh. Took that one. I don't think yeah. he meant to do that. And then here's oh. Rubel. He's going to put it on the floor and probably attack Grayson. They're going to get, get Grayson, Grayson on, on a foul. Body, body there, but I'll take that. That's a good defense. I mean, he's given up so much size. He he has to play it that way. Yeah. He has to play it with low and strength and give up that if they're going to call it. They haven't called it much, so it's not really a bad defense. Make right him there. earn it from the line. I think uh, Scherfe was going to let him play, but Rick Frank didn't think so. Didn't of course, I think when the turn on the spin, that becomes Rick's call because he can see that angle a little bit better. Well, and – he hasn't hurt us so far. He missed the free throw. So yeah, if he misses both, that's a great foul. He, gets he got one. one. Twenty-nine, twenty-seven. By the way, Price finally getting on the uh, board there with that last power through. We'd like to see him get going. Yeah, we need him. Two because three zone. I, yeah. Short corner. Grayson going again. Nice rip. That just one just missed that one go. short. Good rip though. Yeah. That's something we're going to have to keep doing, I think, with, with especially if we can get a matchup with Willis. Willis has three fouls, so nice little spin move. I think Coach is going to have to maybe think about switching and start switching to that high ball screen yeah, if they I keep agree running that. And that's number 32. That's Luke Morris. Nice little spin move. I wish I would get a, I wish I could get that way when I played, you know, that many change of pivot feet. <laughs> and they all do it, but they get away with it so well because they're a little bit more skilled at all the way, all the way, Josiah. Attaboy. There you go. That a boy. And that's what I was talking about earlier, that extra dribble right there. Joe didn't float, settle for the floater. Take that extra dribble and get it right there to the rim. Nobody's going to stop him. 31-29, Eastern Hancock leading here. Halfway through this quarter already. Here comes the weave again. They're taking advantage right here of Jacob, who's There's a Morris. good defender. but Again, and that one outside. We'll give up that. And there is a battle down low between Grayson Mealy and Caden Rubel, and they are those are two guys going after it. Love on the floor. Oh, he lost it. Lost it. Got away with a push. That's all right. Again, they're letting him play. Here comes a three-pointer on the way from Morris. Wow. That is not – I felt wow. like that was not a shot that they want. They want a timeout here. We got a 30-second timeout for Coach Burkett. They definitely giving him the green light because that was quick in transition. You yeah. don't see Eastern Hancock typically shoot it that quick. He's – Gave him a six-point lead now with 3.31 to go. We'll stay with you here. Once again, I want to remind you of our sponsors, the Van Mater Reed Realty Team, uh, Dowling Dumpster Rentals, and Star Financial Bank, bringing you this action for free right there into your home on YouTube. Um, make sure that if you are on YouTube, you hit that subscribe button so you can uh, 
get all the action in all the games as they come in. Let me say this real quick while we have 10 seconds. Um, if it's about Thanksgiving no, I, dinner, no, I don't I, want to hear it. No, I learned my lesson there. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to say thanks to Mr. Romine for all of his hard work. We got some really nice emails this week, surprisingly enough, from people at Union City talking yeah. about how much they appreciate it and really like the way we do the and, – and we're just – we can stand here and say that all we want, but it really comes down to our executive producer over here, Mr. Romine. He just makes us look good. Well, if I could, if I could tell you on the technology side, I started doing the live stream, and yeah, I could, you if did. you look at the early ones with the one camera and the, how many times I forgot to move the camera to, the multiple angles we have now and the new scoreboard and everything that we've got going on, I'm I don't in, know if Grayson wants I was going to say. I'm in therapy still from you doing the technical side of that. Yeah, and uh, get in there. That boy, Joe. Get in there. All right. There you go, Josiah Love. But anyway, he's brought so much that you don't see – because it just becomes taken for granted on your screen. But there's so much that he's brought to the table. And believe me, we are not paying him enough to, to travel with us on the road because that's that right there, there's not enough money in the world for most people. But it's been fun. I enjoy it. I'll keep doing it as long as he keeps doing it. Trey Adams now has it. So the Warriors with a stop would be nice to cut into this, Coach. Yeah, let's attack. There's a good drive. Is it Jacob with the rim? Nice job by Jacob Grant. Took that one hard and right at the rim before the defense gets set up. 34-33, so Coach Burkett's timeout worked out well because we made a little run. Yes, we scored two in a row. Luke Morris has been getting deep, but there we go. We got a steal. Jacob Grant looking for the move. That was a flop. That's a flop. Oh, and a block. And there's a block. And it's yeah. on Willis. You got to take that if you're him, and he didn't. So, it's a good call by Paul. And that is the fourth foul on Caden Willis. I believe that's a 6-0 run, right? And I, I, Coach Bechtel might want to argue this, but if I want to say anything, it was it was a flop, if anything. And, well, he uh, was there. He just got to take it. Yeah. Started falling before he got even got hit. And I, Paul, I can't give it to him yeah. if he's not going to take the, take the charge. Jacob Grant now gives him the lead, 35-34 with 2.16 to go and a free throw on the way. We have not been able to convert, convert an and one tonight, I don't think. Yeah, we got to. Continue to this end, the defensive end. Keep hoping that, you know, they hit a couple threes there. And going through the big guy here, just got got the size back. That time he allowed himself to just spin move right into Jack's shoulder. Yeah. Found it interesting. You know, Rubel's a great kid. He had, he had a few words there for Jack. I don't think it was anything mean, but I think it was just uh, they might be doing a little – both of them might be doing a little more talking than we know. That's Back common, is. folks. It's not something un – I can tell you that I got oh. talked to a lot out there, and I know you did. You played against Matt Painter, so <laughs> I'm sure he was talking a lot. Great cut by Trey oh, Adams. A nice block, but Trey stays with it. We've said it before. A lot of times that block shot come right back to the offense. Stay with it. I like seeing Trey get around the rim. He's got That's good touch. On 25. That's going to be Eli Manship. It's just his first. Yeah. Yeah, you played against Jay Edwards. Yeah, I played against the Marion team. So it was a junior, the Edwards, Jones. They didn't have Keys. to talk. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and my, luckily, luckily enough, the next year, I got to play against the next state championship team, the 88 Muncie Central Bearcats, what most people around here will remember. And yeah. They didn't talk a lot either. But they did talk to me when Chandler did talk, tell me one time that about the dunk he had right on my head. <laughs> let, let you know about that one. Trey Adams gets that free throw. So it's 36-36. Boy, neither team can really get outside of each other more than about six points. There's oh, a lob, a lob inside. Pass. Nice Good job help, by Joe. Josiah. Great backside help defense by Josiah Love. It's just a telegraph pass on Easter Hancock. It's surprising. But Let's get a good shot. Let's no fast. get a good shot here. You get a move. You get a move. Back to Somebody Joe. Cut. Back to Joe. Somebody Back cut. To Joe. There it is. One oh, more. Oh, you got to ah. get it right away. Had, him. Had yeah, it right away. Jack held on to it a little too long. Yep. Joe's wide open. He'll hit that shot. You just got to get it out of your hands quick. About a minute to go in the third quarter. It's been a fun game to watch. Yeah. I mean, it, it may not be the offense a lot of people want, but I just like seeing the physicality in here. Jack Rooker from the short corner. Yeah. We'll take it. Rubel didn't even put his hands up like they were going to give it to him, but Jack would love that shot all night. He loved that short corner jumper. And that gives the Warriors a two-point lead at 38-36. There's Back Rubel inside. inside. He's going to go right at Rooker. 
Oh, nice grip, but he missed it. Oh, no, he got it. That thing in? rolled wow. in there. That did everything come out. I don't know how it fell back in. Rubel is having his best game of the season here tonight, and this was one thing that Coach Burkett put on the scouting report is that he could have a good, strong game. They're giving that short corner to Jack. Yeah, he needs to keep taking it. Let's get the last shot here. Coach is going to say get the last shot. So we're tied at 38 with 14 to go. Calling a set out. He wants to pull you. Joe. Look, look for Joe, Josiah Love getting yep. a shot here. It's a hard. Nice dump down inside. Rooker's got to make a move. Got to go. Oh, got to go. Go up with it. And a oh. foul. There you go. Bailed him out with it. No a, time on the clock. And, and you hate that because it was a foul, and I think that's on Manship. And uh, he's just doing his job trying to play defense. That's just his second. Trey will get two shots out of that. That's well, We got three or four extra possessions on offensive rebounds there. Hard to shoot him at the line when you're the only guy there, but we'll see if Trey can knock these down. He gets the first one. Trey will hit him. That's the end of the quarter. It's 40 to 38. And we're going to take a quick 20 second break. We'll be right back here on the West Hill Sports Network. And we're back. And here is the uh, Property Pros. And Montgomery Insurance, uh, half-court shot. This one is for $300. It was missed the first two weeks. So here we go. Student will shoot first, and then the uh, adult will shoot. So let's take a look at this half-court shot. That's got a chance. That's yeah, short. Uh, it's short. Now, Chad Paskowitz, he is an alumni. He's going to get a chance to shoot here. $300 on the line. It's bank. up off the bank. Oh! Just about. And it'll go to $400. And we don't have a home game next weekend, so it's going to be a while before we. Yeah, end. next one's yeah two weeks from now, Wapahani. So, Coach, uh, we I thought maybe we'd have a chance to talk to the cheerleaders. Don't yeah, forget those do, cheerleaders. Let me do it real quick. All Delaney right. Huffman, Gracie Drake, Ava Whitmire, Tori Clark, Bailey Combs, Hayden Browning. Jenna Woodson, McKenna Terrell, Gracie Penrod, Isabella Coger, Kirsten Ronan, and Kylie Proctor. There you go. Those are our Westell cheerleaders that do a great job both football and basketball season, put a lot of time in. And here we go, the start of the fourth quarter with the Warriors leading by two, 40 to 38. And let's see if the uh, action continues as has been so far. Comes Joe on the back. There's a post up. You're getting a one on one here. That's offensive. Ah. He had good position. They just, I don't know. It didn't seem like ah. they've called that very much tonight, but Rick felt like he had good position. and I guess he's saying he initiated the contact. That's what's supposed to happen on an offensive foul is that, that if that player's got defensive position and the other guy initiates the contact, but I, think I, a, I would like to I play think it on. I a good little bit of act job. Good yeah. job oh, by yeah. the player to act, and, but I think they just let that go. If I'm Jack Rooker. Nice oh, job, Trey great. Adams. And it is. It's off of, uh, I believe that is Caden Powers that lost that one. And Joe can, or I'm sorry, Trey can bother him with this pressure. Jacob Grant brings it up for Westdell. Ooh, they left Grant wide open. He's got a three. Just and that one's it. off. Good block out by the Eastern Hancock. Royals, and it's back over to them with about 7.15 to go. The high ball screen. And this is what he wants to do. He wants to get to the rim. Uh, Skip pass whoop. now. Back inside. That's Morris. Ah. They're going to get the foul call in the basket. Got him on the arm. Yeah, was, he likes to drive, and I give him credit. He drives strong when he gets in there. Now, that wasn't a that wasn't the strongest foul, I didn't no. think, but he did drive it hard. And, so part of it is, is is selling those shots. We talk about you're not going to get bailed out if you don't take a strong shot tonight. You're not going to. And uh, he took that one up strong. But again, these and ones aren't going for no, anybody. No, nobody's getting an and one, and it's 40 to 40. Just under seven minutes to play in the fourth quarter. 
Look for Corbin. Corbin getting – they're sealing Corbin. And that time it was almost like a hold in. There's that slip. Yeah, he's going to yeah, let I'll, play. I'll take That's, that. I'll yeah. take that. That's a good no call. He's got to make that shot. Anticipating contact. And uh, you got to get that. All right. Again, nice hesitation drill. Short corner. I'd watch Rubel to put his head down and make a play here. Oh, we got – talk about letting somebody play their contact. He just muscled that yeah. through two fouls. They're going to bring Grayson back in because yeah. he's getting to the basket too easy. 42-40. It's going to be this uh, coach is calling out a set. You don't want to let face anybody get a run here. Another nice drive. Going Ooh. off. Back in. Here's Josiah Love coming in with it and scores it. Tie game. Josiah Love with that one. It's 42-42. You didn't see Coach get up, worked up there because everyone around here wanted that to be a tech of slapping the backboard. You can hit the backboard all you want. I mean, if you uh, watch an NBA game or a college game, they're hitting the backboard all the time. We just don't see it a whole lot here. Yeah, that's true. Not at this level. It's a nice wraparound. But Jack Ruger did a nice job yep. getting the passing lane. And now Mealy will come in for Rooker. So we lose the size. We gain the little what we say is lose size, gain strength. But uh, – Rubel and Grayson have had some battles in there, but Rubel's uh, overall had a nice game. Oh, it's a good thing he didn't catch that well because he had the corner right there on Jacob. Still trying to get around him. Hit off, off his, his leg. leg, and they're going to send it over to Westdale. Knotted at 42, 540 to go. Everything gets a little bit more. You'll see the crowd tense up a little bit more. Everything get a little bit more tense as that clock yeah. Dwindles down and the game stays close. Yes, yeah, so every possession means more. Grayson with the ball screen. Back outside. Give it up. You didn't, not you, your move, you I was going to say. Give it up. That one's not. Again, oh. that's not Grayson's move. I don't know what we're good doing Good hustle, there. Corbin. Great hustle. That's going to be Grayson. their ball, but that's good hustle. Grayson, I don't mind that, but Grayson's got to stay inside himself a little bit. He's trying to push it, force a shot. I don't mind the jump stop in the lane and yeah. then somebody back cut and then make that play, but he can't force that shot. What I'd like to see probably keep reversing it. We got a little 2-2-1 action here. Yeah. Keep reversing and get it back to Joe for a drive. Maybe Grayson get involved with the ball screen. I like that we're making a change. And it, it, oh, I uh, thought we had the turnover right there. Bounced right to him. That was not a bad possession, no. honestly. It just uh, the ball didn't fall into our hands. Didn't our backside didn't drop there, but or they did, but it was late. Here's your high right ball there. screen. Get a foul. That's a good no He's call. He's just not going to give you That's that. That's a good no. Well, what I like about it is uh, 35. That is uh, Charlie Halcombe. He actually leaned into him with his chest. Could have called a foul there. He didn't. But at the same time, the contact from. Price was was at him, so he just let both of them go. Neither coach is happy with that. No. We'll take that. And that's what you want there, but we got to get a rebound. Oh, Good Josiah still. Love took it right from him. Good rip, Joe. It's 40, 44 all here with about halfway through this quarter. So far, if they can stay with this, I like that they're letting the kids handle the game, you know, letting them play it out. Sure. Keep moving it. There's, that's what we want right there. We're going to get Grayson on the screen. Nope. Oh, no, they get 23. Him. I thought they were going to get Grayson on the screen. That handoff's really hard to guard when you're a big and strong guy is handing it all for you. Garrett Shaw. Here comes Gabe Becerra, I think, into the game. Let's see who he's going to get. I think he's going to get Jacob Grant. What you're going to get here is just a little bit longer and more. You're going to get a little bit more scoring options here with Gabe in there. Coach Bechtel's doing his job to argue that what's he supposed to do there to get around that screen. Yeah. Fair question. Got to go attack. Oh, that went right into – I don't think that's where Corbin was throwing it, but Gabe Becerra came through there and got it. Take it a nice cut, nice finish. It looked like Corbin was trying to kick it back out to the top of the key, and Gabe just came no, through no, and caught it. No, that was it. exactly what he wanted that's to do. That's exactly what he wanted to do with it. Coach is going to call a timeout here. Full timeout. 3.37 I go, Westell leading two. We'll be back with you on the Westell Sports Network.
I'll tell you what, the band sounds great. Yep. And uh, love the energy they bring. So happy to have them here. And a uh, big shout out to anybody in the Warrior Band that we appreciate your attendance. It makes a huge difference. And our student section has gotten better. And uh, I do want to say after Tuesday night, one thing I didn't realize is uh, we had a we did have a wrestling meet that night. Yeah, that a took a lot of our guys away. We had a lot of stuff going on that we night. Had, yeah, we had a lot. We got to fix that. We got to make sure we don't have either one competing for fans. Um, back and forth but a big shout out to our wrestlers they've been doing well already early in the season and uh we've had a lot of already personal best matches and uh a lot of wins so that's good for our wrestling program so here we go 336 to go 46 draw up out of the out of the time i was just going to ask that they had to get something whoa i'm surprised ruble just didn't put that on the floor and yeah, go if he had a matchup he would have liked there's your three-point shooter. He's not hot, had one yet. He'll take uh, that and knock do. it down. And that. They, did a, they were much more patient on that possession, to their credit. And we didn't defend it terribly. They were no. just patient. But uh, Luke Morris, the senior, that's who you want taking it. Here's Josiah Love to the basket. A lot of contact. Yeah, he's not going to get that call. He's no. going to have to kick that and work it around off of one dribble. That's too easy to guard. Got to get a reversal and then get it back and get that. Got buried down there and got a double between Ruble and Same play. The guard. see the same action. It's not broke. Don't fix it. Trying to get them to switch is what he's trying to do. Boy, that was a tough catch. I was going to say, Morris is taking over. Yes. And Luke Morris pushes it to a three-point lead, and we can't let him get too far out of here with 2.30 to go. All right. Be, be patient. We don't have to rush anything here. There's Good action. That's going to be a jump ball, probably. And that's theirs. Yeah, and that's just sometimes you got to know the situation, but also your teammate. You got to wonder are the teammates talking to him and saying, hey, you got a double coming, kick it back out? What I'm seeing right now is that we're in rush mode. It's like we have to get it off one or two passes, and it's the reversal. It's what's going to get it and see what they do here. Now they're going to spread it out and make, you know. Uh, I would look for them to the try to get a screen. mismatch between Willis and Ruble. Oh boy. See if they can get something out of that. That knocked away. A nice Steel. job by the Warriors. Not what I would look for if I'm Eastern Hancock. I would have nope. ran more time. That inside to Price. Price. Oh, boy. And they're going to get Willis, and he's done. Yep. And that is Caden Willis' fifth foul. That's a tough one for them, but a great for us to, get, to take it right out of score here. So they're going to have to substitute. Yeah, Luke that's going to be now. Luke Schilling coming back into the game. So Willis out with two minutes to go, basically. He was arguing that, and I'll say it one more time. But what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> <laughs> it's too it's good to worked, pass up. It's worked all night for you. Yeah. And that's tough for Gotta Eastern have Hancock. We, yeah, that's that's the bad thing. We're not we're not doing well at the line step, this year. Step up there like you know you're going to knock them down. It's about routine. It's not like we as coaches don't have them shooting at practice. It's a, it's a routine thing. You do it the same way every time. That's long. Both of them. That one didn't look bad. It just missed. But and that's gonna. That's those are ones as coaches. You go back and you just like you know I can't do anything about that. He's got to make those. Dig in and get a stop right here. Right, Watch this coming across into Ruble. He traveled. They're gonna get Grayson with yeah. both hands on him. That's all right. It's out of bounds. I mean he got buried. So I almost take that right at this point. It's only a second. That's a miracle. Yeah. I mean you could tell they let us play. If it, Kids like this physical of Grayson guarding a six eight kid. That's yeah, we a just tough can't. Move. We just cannot let Morris. We're, we're losing oh, Morris. He's so he he is all of the last. Yeah. I believe seven points. If they get out of here with this win, then oh, Sarah getting too he got deep. Himself in trouble when he did. Got, yeah. He got too deep. Coach is getting him up. They're going to go. Uh, they see. have to. They're going to go either two two one or one three one. They're going two two one. They have to at this point. A minute 28 to go, but there's plenty of time. Yeah. I need to stop right here. I don't know what we're, we're waiting on something. Here we go. I think we're waiting on Paul to come up here to the midcourt oh, line. Okay. One, one, they're going to 2 1 2, trying to go against it here. Now here comes a trap. Nope. Not yet. There's more of a token. Coach may call a timeout if he doesn't like it. But, but there he is. That's a good call timeout, to be honest with you. And it is timeout. I mean, they have four to go, so Eastern I think that's Hancock a good timeout by their kid. With a full, yeah, 
One eleven to go. We'll take a quick timeout. We'll be back here on the West Hill Sports Network. Back here on the West L Sports Network. We appreciate you tuning in. Tell a friend. Make sure you hit the su subscribe button. Coach and I were just talking, and really, if you want to look back in the last, oh, probably two minutes, three minutes, Luke Morris for Eastern Hancock, the senior, just took over and said, you know, I'm not going to lose this game, and I'm going to put us ahead. And he really put the team on his back. And yeah. you, you said some things. He gets nice angles at the basket. He puts his head down, and he's not afraid to contact. He's not afraid to finish. Finishes well. You can tell he's a senior. You can tell he's played. He's not afraid. And if they step out of here, I mean, if they can step out with a the win, then he's saved the bell, that's for sure. That's that's who I'd put it on, number 32. But I'd also say no. Caden Rubel got him there in the early part because Willis is just with the foul trouble, has not really hurt us tonight because he's been in the foul trouble, and it's really been – more of Ruble early, and now uh, Morris just Thanks taking over. A little fury action. A little one, two, two. And oh, that's going to stay here. Ooh, I was going to say weird. You didn't catch that reference, but Luke Morris saved by the bell. I believe that was Zach Morris. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. That's okay, though. No, oh, it's I, not Luke. Don't try to question oh, me. Oh, well, boy, that was a, it was a good Got break. To pick oh, it up. he tried to kick it. He kicked it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not a bad decision, though, honestly, if you're really stops the transition. Get everybody back. You know, get back. These coaches like, we're on defense. We we're talking about a brain fart right there. Yeah, we're on defense with a five-point lead. People, Why are, what are you doing? People wonder what we're doing as coaches out here. you got to coach everything. Yeah, Joe's going to try to get to the, the rim. He got a lot of contact, a lot of contact. I, I thought he'd use that spin move he always uses. We're going to have to foul. And we do, do foul, and that's, that's going to send number 35. Charlie Howell in the line. One of the seniors. <laughs> no, it's not yet, Coach. Oh, I'm sorry. No, the one to give, so that's I good. I always forget yeah. the new rule. Yeah, I know. We all Just love like it. you forget that it's Zach Morris, not we, Luke Morris. We all love that new, new rule. It's like you didn't watch an episode of Saved by the Bell. I knew it was I knew it was Zach, but I was just trying to. There we found Morris. Probably not the guy we wanted to, but we had to. It's going to be on Josiah Love. Let's hope he shoots. He's more like Screech. Uh, Sometimes you just want me to stop. Don't you? Shoots like Belding. <laughs> Mr. Belding. Looked like. Uh, we could have used these a lot. Oh, that's short. Look like Mario Lopez, shoot like Belding. Yes. We. What was Mario Lopez's character? A, uh, a, uh, AC. AC. I don't, Look, I, I don't know. I never watched it. That's right. <laughs> See how quick I came up with it. Look like AC. That's all. Oh, he got it. Shoot like Belding. Yeah. He gets that one. No, we need a quick, we gotta go. quick. We got to go. We got to go and get something off of a shot right away. Something quick. Joe with the three. That's, That's going to be just off. And they're going to let that go out of bounds into the true leaders with 28 seconds left. Let's see what we got here. We got to get up. We got to get up. Coach is pleading with them to get up and do a little bit of denial if Looks they like can. A, going 2-2-1. Two, two, so Trey's coming up a little I bit. I think high. we got to go foul if we're going to. I would, uh, this is the kid I'd foul right here. Yeah, well, we didn't. And we're going to foul Morris. No, we're not going to foul anybody right now. Oh, they turn it over. Oh, oh and then, then we, we turn, turn it, it over, over, and that's going to be a. And this is it. This is, I would dribble uh, this I had thing to, in. Had to, Gabe Becerra with the foul. He had the layup dunk right there. For a second there, the uh, old circus tents looked like they showed up. Caden Rubel said, pass me the ball. I can get a chance to get a dunk right there. That, these these will definitely seal it. It's, it's almost out of hand anyway, but if one of these goes, it'll seal it. It was a good, well hard fought game, but Luke Morris just said we're we're not gonna lose this one. And Halcom hits that one. Makes it 53-46. We'll have a quick post game. We'll go over some unofficial stats and then uh, I gotta get on the road. Yeah, we didn't talk about that at all. Yeah. Let's let's uh, finish this game up here and see what happens. If they score, if we score, we've got a timeout, I'm guessing. And uh, we've blocked on the I shot. I think that'll be it. And it's we gonna won't end. Foul. 54-46 will be the final. Eastern Hancock wins this one at Richard E. Johnson. 
And uh, we will be here, back here very shortly with some unofficial stats and some post-game. Warriors in a tough one tonight, losing to MEC rival Eastern Hancock. We'll be right back here on the West Hill Sports Network. All right, we're back here inside Richard E. Johnson for the post game, and it was a hard-fought game tonight with the Warriors losing 46-54, Eastern Hancock handling things. I'll do a little bit of unofficial on the points for the Warriors. We did not have the points for Eastern Hancock, and then Coach will uh, give us his analysis, as always, and then we will uh, we'll be off for a couple of yep. games. Yeah, we are. Uh, but unofficially, not in order of scoring, just in order of roster. We've got Jacob Grant with two. Jack Rooker with two. Gabe Becerra had nine. Corbin Price with six. Josiah Love with 17. Um, Trey Adams with two. And Grayson Mealy with seven. Uh, we didn't really have any foul trouble on the evening. No. Uh, on the other side of things, the only player that did foul out was Caden Willis, who was quiet for Eastern Hancock because of the foul trouble and really the, uh, the leading the way for them. Um, and we don't have official numbers on them, but we do know they're two leading scorers. Caden Rubel inside the junior, 6'4", and Luke Morris, the senior there late, little 5'10 guard, 
did a nice job of just kind of putting the team on his back and carrying him. But there's your scoring. Uh, Coach, if you could, break it down for us a little bit. Well, it was right there as a game. As West will go back and watch, they'll feel like there's some things they could have done. And, uh, you know, they were right there with a two-point lead with about four, four minutes to go. Uh, give both teams credit. It was a hard-fought night. I think both teams came in here and gave it a great effort. Eastern Hancock coming off of a game last night where they got beat pretty handily and then had to turn right around and play. And uh, Westall bouncing back after a game that they didn't particularly play well in on Tuesday night. But I, what I did like was uh, I thought both teams played hard. I thought both teams played physical. I thought it was a well-played high school basketball game. I thought the difference came down to the very end of the game where when Luke Morris made a couple plays, and he found a way to get to the rim, and they were uh, patient a few times where we came down and rushed a couple shots, and I know that Coach is going to talk them through that stuff. Coach Burkett will get them to the situations where it's – when it's those are the situations where you don't have to play fast. It feels like you're way down when you're only right. down four points. When it feels like there's only – hey, I'm looking up. There's only two, two minutes left to go. But, man, that could be a lot of possessions in basketball, especially in high school basketball. So we just got to get – the shots that coach wants us to get in those situations, we're learning how to do that still. It'll come. I thought we played well enough to win. We just didn't. And uh, those happens those, some of those nights. So what do you do? You get back in the gym next week and you get better. Both games on the road next week, but I feel like they're both games that Westell should be able to win if we take care of business. We're at Union, and then we have, we're have at Monroe Central. Typically a very tough place to play. Won't be an easy game. But I feel like if we can play like we played tonight and we sure up a few things, I think that we can find a way to win both games next weekend and bounce right back out of this. So, you know, it's easy for me to say that from this side. I know how I would have felt when I was back there in the locker room and in my office and beat myself up all night. Coach has these guys ready to go. They just got to get – when it comes down to executing at the end of the game, you got to get some stops, we got to get some – and then turn that into possessions on our end. Uh, but I, I, you can't fault the effort. The effort was good, and uh, Coach will get them there. Well, just looking at December, December is always where we really hit a good portion of our conference play. You're going to look. Coach is going to come up here, by the way. You're going to look at Eastern Hancock, Union, Monroe Central, and Wapahani, and then Daleville. So as Coach is getting ready to join us here, and let me turn him up in there and uh, he's getting ready to put the headset on and get started but what we're talking about is that you know you've got Eastern Hancock tonight and then you go Union Monroe Central Wapani Daleville and then the only non-conference game you have in December is the tri game right on December 28th so it's a big conference right uh, it's yes. a big conference um, month and we started this one off but I, I think if I were to say anything it's never good when you lose, but yeah. it was much better than Tuesday night. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's why I told the guys it was a much different feel in the locker room. I mean, I think it's a good teachable game for us. You, I, I don't like to learn through losses. I like to learn through wins, yeah, absolutely. but uh, as do those guys. But this game was 42 to 42, and there's more, there's more that led to this. But it was neck and neck with about two and a half minutes, and we talked about in a they called a timeout. They were the ones that were feeling the pressure, and right. they. I told him in the timeout, let's work the basketball. Let's reverse it a little bit. Let's not throw it to the post immediately. Let's see what we can get. And we, two straight possessions, threw it down on the very first ball screen and then denied one and drove to the basket and tried to take it up against their big kid. Who's, right. he's, he's a good player. I mean, yeah. he's big and strong and no foul call, so we don't get anything out of that, and they capitalized. And that that's how it – you know, that's the teachable moment, time and score, late in the game. we got to make a little better choices so we don't lose those close games. Well, that's exactly what I said right before you got up here. I didn't know you were coming up, but I said one of the things that happened late in the game was we shot it quicker than I know you wanted us to because yeah. it feels like, and then we got down a little bit, and it feels like we got to hurry up and get those back. But there were a lot of possessions left in that game, and yes. you've got to take the time to run, like you said, trust what you want out of that. As a coach, trust that you're going to get those – possessions back and to get a, sh a good shot i thought we defensively you guys had a great game plan yeah thought defensively we did a really good job we frustrated them all night i mean you held them to you know 54 points and some of those were late i mean so i mean i defensively great game plan i think i think there I think were some bright good spots. things yeah, yeah i, I think, think you did a lot of good things they were bright spots. like honestly and i'm not saying this because you're on here kyle but 
Grayson guarded 43 yeah. really, really well. He, it, they were both physical with each other. Absolutely. And I know he's not going to back down, as you know, but he's like 5'10". He's yeah. trying to guard a kid at 6'4", 6'5", and there's similar physicality. And I thought he did a great job on him, really. And I, yeah. I thought he – in the first half, this is one thing we talked about. We were not taking it at him. I was talking to the officials. I was like, how was that not a foul? But I'm obviously on the other end. He said, well, he faded – towards the baseline. He wouldn't go at him. He was going away. I'd give it to him if he'd go at him. Yeah. He wasn't going at him. Well, Grayson was going at him yeah. in the first half, and we were trying to get more of our guys to do some of that when they drive. Those long closeouts, they can't run at you and plow you over if you're driving the basket. If you drive and you're, there's a collision, it's on them. Right. Yeah. So we talked about it at halftime. I thought we did a better job in the second half, which is why it got back evened out because they came back in that second quarter. It got back evened out. And then, like, those decisions late were, were challenging for us. I mean, we got to hit more free throws, but they didn't hit free throws either. No, they right. didn't. Our they didn't. stats were almost exactly <laughs> the same. Yeah. It was just they made a few more baskets late. Came right down to the very end. Yes. We talked about it. Came down to Luke Morris, made a couple plays. Yes. And uh, we've got guys that can do that, and they've just got to understand how to get themselves into those positions like you want them to. Yeah. And we'll get there. You'll get them there. And uh, like you said, it's a teachable moment. Yes. We learn a lot from losses. Hate them, but later, in, if it pays off down the road, okay. We, talk, we talked about also this, yes, this is our first MEC game, and as you guys talked about, we play a bunch of MEC matches. This, I mean, we have so many MEC games this month. The, it's still, the MEC still goes through while behind. Yeah. Right. So if we can beat them on December 15th, then we still are, have a shot at this Absolutely. thing. Yeah. So Absolutely. we're not out of it at all. No. And the other thing that I notice when you look at the stat sheet, and I think it's something that when you look point, points-wise – is trying to find the second consecutive score that co- will come in consistently yes. each night because it's been someone different every game. Tonight, you know, it was Becerra, who, you know, the last few games has been quiet. Uh, early on, Jacob Grant was the first game of the year. He was your, your right there. Yep. Corbin Price ran there for a little bit. But I think and, – and it's hard to tell, guys, we need to find that. But it for Josiah – for people to not just focus in on Josiah, which right. they're going to do more. We've got to find a consistent score. And then it's fine to have one of those other guys be that third guy, but we need a second consistent score. I think that's something you would love to see. Yeah, and in our first two wins, our scoring was so spread out. I mean, Josiah is going to lead us probably every night. It's just the way it's going to work. I mean, the kid scores. But we were so spread out. We had almost four. We were one point shy of having four guys in double figures in the first game, had four guys in double figures in the second game. We can do that, and we're at our best when we are. We just right. we didn't play well, obviously Tuesday. We're, we didn't do that tonight. It no. just this was a different game too, yep. so it wasn't quite as high scoring. So if we got somebody with six or eight, that's a lot in yes. this game. And didn't, they let them play. I like yeah, that. Didn't I did like down. that. Yeah, we like yeah. that both ways. I'm sure you're fine with that as long as it's consistent. Yes. yes. And listen, great game plan. First of all, it was just a good high school basketball game, and unfortunately, somebody has to go home with a loss. But right. I felt like we were prepared. We battled. You yes. can't, we can't value that enough that the effort was good. Yes. And then I know that you were a little disappointed the other night. So we can turn the page on that now. We can. And we can, we can step up and say, listen, we've got some good things to take from this. We'll learn from it. Go find a way. I feel like we have the opportunity to win both next weekend yeah. and get ourselves two MEC victories next week. Yeah, that would feel, that would feel pretty good after this week. That would be great. Well, I want to thank you for your time, get you back down there. The family I know is waiting on you. Yeah. And so uh, thanks for coming up. We yep. appreciate talking with you. thought the team played a drastically different game than they did Tuesday night, so your preparation was really good. Um, Eastern Hancock still has enough seniors in there to, to pull it out, and that really came down to it. They yeah. just they, they, they went with Luke, and that's what happened. So appreciate you coming in, and uh, we'll see you. Uh, we won't be on the air next week, but we'll see you next week. So good luck at Union thank and you. Monroe Central. Thank thanks, you. Coach. Good luck, Coach. That's Coach Burkett, and uh, our final uh, synopsis here and talk is we just beat the same thing to death, so we're not going to talk about it too no. much. Or the Warriors lose tonight, but it wasn't a loss when you come off of the uh, impact and the improvement we saw from Tuesday night. Going into Union next week in Monroe Central, those are good possibilities for some good wins. Tune in. We're going to do our best to try to get. I don't know that we can from Union, but probably from Monroe Central we might be able. We're going to check on that for the huddle camera to see if we can link in. If not, Hey, make the trip, go to Union, 
go to uh, Monroe Central and watch the game in person. But uh, next one, we're back here, is uh, the next week. Wapahani, like Coach was saying, that'll be the Wapahani game. It'll be here, big MEC battle. They're very good. You'll and have to have Coach Hanson sit in on that one because that is the uh, – That's the nutcracker that's for the you. That's the nutcracker. You've got all kinds of stuff oh my, going on. Listen, daughter. you got to get – let's just cut to the chase. we got to get you home so you can put on – drive. Your green and yellow I got a good face green paint. Bay. Because you're going to Green Bay. Going so to every, Green Bay. Everybody tune in tomorrow. Sun, it's a Sunday night game, and look for the Mealy family. Section 106. At, at section 106. Look at them. There will be three of them dressed in green and one with a Chiefs Travis jersey Kelsey jersey. Yeah. All right. Well, it's been great bringing you the game. We want to thank Coach. We want to thank Mr. Producer. That's it from Westell. Warriors lose their first MEC matchup, but money or much more to go. We'll see you next time here on the Westell Sports Network.